Welcome to DMG Mori UK's Technology Excellence Live event direct from the headquarters here in Coventry. Over the next two days, we're going to be diving into the portfolio that DMG Mori has to offer of over 150 machine models. But don't you worry, we're going to break that down for you. Now, did you know that 43% of the business secured by DMG Mori UK in 2020 was from brand new customers? There has been an industry perception that owning a DMG Mori may be out of many people's price range, but DMG Mori UK are here to prove that wrong. The purpose of today's event is to offer an overview of DMG Mori UK and then tomorrow we'll be back with two hours of technical insight. So be sure to join us then, but first, to kick things off, let's head over to Mark and Paul who are on the sofa with Steve Finn to explain how choosing DMG Mori will transform your business. Welcome to the Coventry showroom of DMG Mori. Uh, I'm here with my friend, my colleague, and the managing director of MTD CNC, Mr. Paul Jones, and more importantly, Mr. Steve Finn, managing director of DMG Mori UK. Before we start the show, Steve, I know you need to say something. Yes, um, unfortunately, uh, we lost uh, a dear colleague of ours uh, in January, uh, Neil Stewart. A lot of people in the industry would have known Neil, and that's really why I'm broadcasting that this morning. Um, very, very fond memories of him, a tremendous technical guy, and we will dedicate today's programme and tomorrow's programme in Neil's honour. Now, now, you used to work with uh, Neil yeah. at DMG. Terrific guy. Back in early 2000s, uh, he was my product manager on the milling side. Um, yeah, he, he was, I mean, just a lovely guy, really good sense of humour. Um, fun uh, and awash with technical knowledge, a real, you know, a real credit to your company and you know, he was a really great guy. And at every event we used to go to, Neil would be one, one of the first to actually welcome you on a stand and uh, do you want a drink and uh, that sense yeah. of humour was fantastic. So uh, Paul and the uh, uh, Mine M MTD CNC team, uh, we send our regards to the family um, and uh, we wish you well. Um, nice. And also the DMG Mori uh, team as well. Um, so, the event. Well, first of all, Neil would have wanted this to be a success. So let's take this upbeat now and again, think of him in the positive, yeah. Now, when, when you look at these type of events, Steve, um, could you tell our audience what you're looking to achieve over the next two days? Well, we've been, we've been locked down for, a, for such a long time now that, that events like this are almost becoming commonplace, but we did one back in October it was very successful for us and I think it's really important that we as a company keep, um, keep our customers ahead of what we're doing um, in the technology and we've got a whole wide range of technologies from not just machine tools but software, automation, digitization, finance, insurance and we've got such a big story to tell that these events are really great to either watch live or watch a later date. No, it's quite amazing when we were chatting uh, before the event. 43% uh, of your sales last year was new business. What do you put that down to? Well, it, it's, um, you know, that wasn't by accident. And I think it, last year was actually a little bit of a hiccup for us and everybody, to tell you the truth. Um, this is kind of 10 years in the making since DMG and Mori have come together. Um, making sure that we have the right training in place for our staff, making sure that that we can deliver our resources to, to the customers. Um, this, is, this is vitally important. The product is unique in a lot of respects uh, and very, very wide, so it gives the customers lots and lots of opportunities. But we took last year to actually do a lot of training. Um, and we began to give the, see the benefit of actually that 10 years previous, that working. 10 years of hard graft to make it right. And do we get it right every time? Not always. But we have the right direction, we have KPIs in place to make sure that, that we go in the right direction. And 43% new business, to me, tells me that the market is believing in us. It believes in our product, it believes in DMG Mori UK. Um, what level of automation was that as well? You know, how many of your solutions 
Um, last year we sold quite a few solutions and they range from either gantry loaders or freestanding robots to pallet systems on horizontal and verticals, um, four axis and five axis machines. And I think we were somewhere, I'm going to have to take this off the top of my head, probably about 35% of that, maybe 40% was automation, which is quite high. So it's a big contributor. And I mean, what about the finance side as well? I know it's something that you're going to talk a lot in detail yeah. later today and tomorrow. Big contributor as well? Huge contributor. I mean, the finance package that we offer is unique. Nobody, nobody in the world can touch what we've got. You know, we've got something that's aligned exactly with our products. We know the residual value of our products. Mm -hmm. We know the cost of them. And we can put a package in front of a customer that really meets his, his needs. So whether that be deferred payments or reduced payments for a period of time, um, whether we want to use it to allow a customer to do his R&D work for the first couple of years, then go into something a bit higher. There's so many permutations that we can do, absolutely unique. Over 50% of our business was done with DMG Murray Finance. So today, it's vitally important that when we put together a proposal, that proposal is based on a strong technical foundation and a commercial um, opportunity as well. So the whole proposal is fairly compelling, both technically and commercially linked. It's about de-risking, isn't it? Sorry, Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, engineers, they, they, even through the difficult times we've been through, if, if, if you can take as much risk out of their investment as possible, it just, it, it, it just paves the way for them to, you know, to be reassured that they're still going to be in business in, in, in years to come. And they've got the technology to offer to their customers it allows, as well. It allows them to take the risk. You know, we, yeah. we are working with them. So it allows them to actually be a bit, more, um, a bit more creative in what they want to do, how they want to do their production, how they want to work the, the, the machines, how they want to do the training, how they introduce the machines. And, and that all comes together. It's not about a piece of cast iron these days. It's everything around it. And we're with those guys. So those production engineers can be totally reassured that we're right behind them. Uh, and that's a good point. It's, it's all about uh, collaborating. But uh, uh, just change the subject slightly. Uh, Paul and I have been visiting this showroom for many years. I've never seen so many stock machines, still in their boxes, still with wrappers on. And you're telling me there's, uh, there's 40 models coming into the showroom over a period of time and is this because of the live event? The live event was very influential last October but we've also looked at what we're doing now and, and we all know that you know people are talking about the the economy being like a coiled spring you know it's becoming a common phrase now it's a coiled spring but the reality is is that last two months for us we've seen some really strong business um, particularly in medical you know which is NHS has got to gear itself back to a situation where it's doing the operations and obviously machine tools have a big influence on components that go into, into our bodies, <laughs> if you need them. Um, but it's also about actually having that confidence to move forward, forward. And, you know, I mentioned yesterday in the podcast, I don't believe in putting the shutters down. I don't believe in the fact that we'll pull the curtains together and when we'll have a little peek out when it's ready. You go out there and you hit it full on. And if that kill causes you some pain, then so be it. But actually that pain will, will pay you back. It will bring you back into a situation where you've got high quality training, which we've done so much of over the last uh, eight or nine months. We continue to do that. We've brought product in because we believe in manufacturing. Our colleagues in uh, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, you know, the big powerhouses in Europe, they're seeing business really ramp up very, very quickly. And the price and the demand of iron ore has gone up, as we've all read about recently. That's indicative of what's going to happen in manufacturing. And I mean, this, yeah, sorry, so we've got to move on to milling uh, in a moment. But one question I was going to say <coughs> is that what's your message to engineers that may not know DMG Mori? Come and talk to my area sales guys or my senior business managers because we have a solution for everybody. Customers may not want to work with us, they may want to work with us, that's their choice. But we have a full rounded solution. Well, I think that just says it, says it all. These guys have got stock. It, it, this is very much of a, a sales promotion. It, it's getting UK manufacturing uh, back to where it should be. Uh, thanks very much for your time, Steve. Uh, I know we're going to be talking to you uh, tomorrow. Uh, coming up next is milling.
Welcome back. Coming up on today's show, DMG Mori have a whole portfolio of over 150 machine models. But first, they want to break it down for you. So firstly, we'll be covering the three, four and five axis milling solutions. But if you're looking for a different type of machine, we will have turning and powder bed additives that will be coming up later. Now, we are live until 12.30 today and we are waiting to get your questions answered on anything that you see here throughout the sessions. So please send those questions in or email your inquiries to charlie.lucas at dmgmori.com. Thanks, Lindsay. Uh, we're back in the studio. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, DMG Mori milling solutions uh, here with Kevin and Tim. Uh, now, you're going to be covering uh, three, four, and five axes uh, through the range. I understand there's right, 64 uh, machines in the portfolio, which Correct. is which is huge. Um, but let's start with the three axes. Right, three axes from DMG Mori. We've got six machines in that range. We start with the M1, and we move to the CMX machine, uh, DMC, and then we go up to three other couple of types of machines. Mm. The, the M1 has been something we, we focused yes, on a lot on the last yeah. show. And congratulations for getting back on the chair again. You must have done a good job last time. Yeah. Um, it is some, some machine. It, it, it's, it's, we're going to see this in a lot of job shops. Good general purpose machine, isn't it? But very, very affordable as well. And it's important to stress at this point too that a lot of the machines we will be talking about are available from, from stock here, um, or certainly will be in the near future. So that's a big driver for this show. But yeah, just just talk to us about that M1 compared to maybe the CMX and where it fits. Yeah, I mean the CMX now has evolved to a machine with many, many options. The M1 is a machine that, if you like, our customers asked us to think about participating in that field. The M1 brings us a machine which is very, very cost affordable to mm. our customers at the same level of quality that you come to expect of DMG mm. Mori. Mm. And the performance of the machine, I mean, we've had mm. the machine in the showroom now for a couple of months, as you two know, mm. and the performance in there is absolutely superb. Mm. And that really comes from the base itself mm. being one solid cast iron piece, mm. 2.4, 2,400 kilograms in weight, just mm. the base alone. I think I said to Paul, actually, when, when you uh, launched the machine, it's such a competitive marketplace, the VMC marketplace, but obviously it's going to open up so many doors for you. It is doing, yeah, and the machine's uh, packaged quite cleverly as well. There's three packages yeah. available. So you've got the, uh, the Plus and the Pro, and also the uh, complete. Mm. Um, and I think it's important about this session is to try and explore um, so many machines, we've got 20 years, yeah. so yes. we've got to kind of uh, condense it and move through. But some of the differences between the, between the range, I mean, let's move on to the, the CMX and then maybe the DMC. Mm. Okay, the M1, great machine, going to be mm. a huge success. In fact, we're going to see it cutting shortly. Yeah. But um, let's maybe then pick up on the CMX, where that sits, and then maybe the DMC, where, where, the, where yeah. the divisions are with those two. So, C C CMX um, is, is sort of where everybody maybe thinks we begin, but as Kevin said, the M1 was what mm. customers were also asking for to bring in that new, new element. But CMX, where that differs is that we've got um, so sized variations, 600, 800, and 1100. So our bed length is growing on those machines. And they've been quite popular in, in all, all, all aspects of the industry, really. Can I just remind uh, uh, our viewers, if you've got any questions uh, about the milling range or, or any questions uh, uh, over the show, please contact Charlie Lucas. Our email address will, will come up. These guys will hopefully answer your questions or your colleagues will obviously help with some of the others. But, um, I mean, it's a huge range. Uh, I mean, where, where would you start as a, as a salesman uh, I think with the range? It, it's always down to the application. Um, the knowledge of the sales guy is, 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 is critical. Um, I know I think we're going we're gonna to see um, the M1 cutting, as I said. But maybe let's then go on to machines like maybe the, the DMC. Okay, so you've got extra stroke then capable, yeah, available extra, on these extra machines. Extra stroke, uh, variations in spindle tapers. You go to HSK. 100, so you're going up a size, whereas the CMX machines are sort of 40 tapers or 63, 
the, the DMC machine can grow in taper sizes. So what differentiates where you put one or the other there then? Is it, I know I talk about application, but I'd like to get more specific. I think you'd be looking at, when you're going up on a taper size, you're looking for more, more power, you need more stability in the machine. Mm, yeah, more, more rugged machining. And I suppose, obviously, it, it, it can be the actual material you're cutting yes. as well can, yes. uh, you know, sort of guide you to, to certain machines. And when you look at the array of uh, components that you've got there, it, it's, it's quite remarkable, you know, what you can offer into the marketplace. Yeah. yeah, the other thing that not everybody knows is that we've got the, the MVX series, which is box guideway. That comes from the uh, Japanese side of the business. Um, you know, if you want some harsh milling, that machine can cope with that quite nicely. Well, this is always the big, comp big topic, isn't it? Box guideway versus linear it rail, is. you know, higher speeds. Um, you know, or heavier cuts, where, where do you Absolutely. sit? And it does come down to those, um, to those applications, big U-drilling operations. Um, still, sticking on the three axis, you've yep. also then got uh, machines like the I-30, which is a twin pallet machine, so that moves you maybe into production, Tim. Yeah, that's, that's into sort of high volume, sort of probably one or two products in your range. Um, again, we're gonna talk about automation again tomorrow. It's a, mm. It'll be a, it's a yeah. cracking machine to have a little robot load in the pallet while it's in, then it indexes and it's a... Uh, and, and just because of time, let's move on to four axis because we've got four and okay. five to get through. Yep. Um, you say four axis, but essentially what we're saying here, Kevin, is your ho horizontal machining centre. Horizontal machining centres, yeah, NHX range primarily, starting from 400 mil within the 500 mil pallet, 550 machine, 6,300, 630 mil machine, 800 mil machine, and topping that off at a thousand uh, size pallet. And then the, the, the areas of split again to me is you can look at different industries for, for heavier duty machining, BT50, box guide way again, or you can go for high dynamics, linear rails, acceler you know, fast acceleration and deceleration. You, you have a, a, a split between those two, don't you, within these yeah, ranges? Yeah, there's another range of uh, horizontal machining centres we can offer. I mean, it depends on the application, as you would know, Paul, so we review the application. We can always go for our NH range, which is uh, DCG technology. We can talk a little bit more about that tomorrow when we start to look at the, uh, the NMV, because mm. it takes the same technology over both platforms. Um, but that is for the, uh, the more taxing of application again, really. But can you explain that DCG quickly? I know we will go into more detail, but this is where you're talking about a double, double ball, ball screw, isn't it? Double yeah, drive. well, when a load comes, if, if you drive a machine from both sides or have a ball screw driving a, a guide, a, a casting from both sides, no matter where the load is placed on that beam, the motors can react to keep it nice and constant movement. If you have just a central drive and you've got a loading on the corner of the drive, then there's a twisting effect, as you can imagine. And that does affect the surface finish in your part. Yeah. I mean, when you look at applications, Tim, I mean, I, I know, you know, uh, the, NH, the NHX may be suitable for aircraft volume components, the electronics industry, quick removal of material. But then when you start going into the box guideway machine, you might be looking at mold tools, oil and gas. Yes. They're, they're, they're the areas, aren't the they? The heavier because industries, yeah. Heavier industries really like that. But, I mean, I would say that there's, there's a, there is, as you mentioned, it's very difficult sometimes to make that split of, of, of which way you go. Mm. Some customers, no matter how hard you try, will be traditional and they want to go one way or the other, you know. Yeah. But we found that the NHX and the NH fulfil all that sort of, the categories that they really need. Yeah. Well, one thing I'd like to ask is maybe, maybe uh, it might, could be on engineers' minds now. We've been very fortunate this time last year to be over with you in Fronton. Yes. Uh, and what's the difference between a Speedmaster spindle and a standard spindle? Okay, whenever you see a master as a name of a spindle, whether it be for a turning machine, whether it be for a milling machine, then that spindle has been designed, developed and built by DMG Mori as a company. So Dr. Mori set a task to the design engineers a number of years ago now to produce a whole range of spindles for the company, Speedmaster, Torquemaster, a whole group of spindles. And the, the really the, um, the criteria that he wanted was, a, let's take a 20,000 RPM spindle for instance. He wanted that 20,000 RPM spindle to be offered to the market 
with a uh, three-year warranty, unlimited hours, and that's quite a task, as you can I was imagine. I puts you under a lot of pressure from a manufacturing point of view, but uh, the, the, the amount of spindles that are, are coming out of uh, front and on a, mm. on a sort of hourly basis is quite uh, well, unique, you've got to isn't think it? With a horizontal machine, you know that that spindle is—it's all about efficiency, isn't it? Yeah. And that that spindle needs to run. I mean, you must see this, Tim, when you're talking yeah. to people. It's got, to, it's got to be up in the 90%, hasn't it? Exactly. If that's down for a day or two. Exactly. And that spindle, of course, that, that master spindle is not only to horizontals. It, it, it goes in the variety of all our milling machines, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the unique features that, that I like to promote about that is that, you know, you can be sort of heavy, heavy machining on titanium in the morning and high-speed cutting aluminium in the afternoon on the same spindle mm -hmm. um, because those... That spindle arrangement, the bearing is preloaded. It's under constant preload, which really gives it that extra rigidity. But, but it's fascinating you say that because when I used to sell machines many years ago, it, you, you, say, you say sell <laughs> or <laughs> propose, propose. Um, you could never get the difference between. There was never a spindle that that fitted all. It was either that the customer wanted to go for you know plenty of torque, or they wanted to go for plenty of speed. But nowadays we're seeing the, the, these two come together, well, aren't we? It's a preload place onto the bearings via a spring mechanism. So as temperature rises, you've still got the same preload on the bearings. That's where the problem comes in, really, Paul. If you've got a spindle running cold and then running warm, yeah. you get an expansion going on. If you not get an automatic system for compensating for the preload. Mm. Time's uh, t ticking on at the moment. Okay. Uh, but uh, th there is a question, actually. Um, I'll, I'll throw this over to Tim. Uh, can I try before buying a machine, lend it to me, if, if, if I like it, I'll buy it, for instance. Um, I think what we tend to do there is we, we encourage people to come and have a look at the machine in our showroom, have a test cut, and I think really at that point you're going to know whether you like the machine or not. I really. Yeah, we can do extensive uh, yeah, trials. Yeah, yeah, too, yeah. Really. So I think the answer is no. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, afra I'm afraid not, but it's a, it's a, it's a very good question. Um, now, have we, uh, do you feel that you've covered the yeah, four axes? Yeah, I think we need to move into yeah. five because this is a okay. really fa fascinating topic. Yeah. I mean, Again, five axes, the additional axes. The, the, the topics become more interesting the more axes we talk about. And I think I mentioned this yesterday. If we were talking six or seven, it'd be even more interesting, wouldn't it? But the five axis, I look at some of your models, and I'm going to start with the DMP70. This is a very small, um, agile yep. performance machine. And the way that this sort of um, turret-type tool changer, that is all about point-to-point, um, -point, isn't it? Chip-to-chip small um, intricate parts lots of maybe different tools that you've got to reduce that idle time completely tim that it's, it's so important yeah. with that machine isn't it it's about productivity absolutely yeah the tools are not even kept in a magazine separate the working area they're, they're kept shrouded within the work area because chip to chip is essential there you know you're talking seconds rather than yeah i mean the, the medical sector you had a machine here before that had the, lo the loading and the auto loading I do think that that sort of technology nowadays with the, the I mean, is it a BBT30 spindle on that? It is, yeah. But they're still highly capable, aren't they? They're they still, are, yes. you know, I think the demo we saw was cutting a hard, you know, quite hard still Yeah, we've got too. face contact on that as well. So yeah. that helps with rigidity yeah. on that machine. Um, and this range is so extensive. I mean, then you move into the, uh, the, the CMX. Now, this is a great first five-axis machine. You sell a lot of these, Tim? Oh, absolutely. From a, from a point of view where of inquiries, that's probably one of the highest um, amount. Quote more on that, I think, than, than a lot of the other machines. But, but it's what a three I would, plus two. It's not a three. Yeah, point. it's a three plus two, and that's 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 the point really. That for a lot of people, when they think about five axis, how much of the job is really full five axis? Mm. So you know, people can tilt. You can tilt to the right angle. You've got access with the tool. So in a, the majority of the cases, three plus two machines are very very uh, you know proactive. Mm -hmm. But is there a limited amount of options on here? I mean, let's do what we did on the, on the three-axis side. Let's compare maybe. Let's pick the CMX, the popular DMU50, and then the DMU um, Evo machines. Let's maybe look at some of the differences between those, Kevin. Maybe could you establish yeah, well, where they sit? CMX um, is just three plus two. But, you know, for the majority of applications, that's perfectly adequate. If you need more than that, then we step up to a DMU50. Um, both of these are very high-volume sellers in our company. It's more or less the same kinematics off the CMX to the DMU50. And then from there, we move on to um, like a gantry, small gantry style machine with the Evo, with a knuckle type fifth axis and really high dynamics, very high dynamics for simultaneous five axis surfacing. Mm. 
do people ever do you ever find people come here and the fact you can offer them so much they they go away and it, it makes them pontificate a, a bit more than they possibly should whereas if you just said no, this, this is a machine that will do what you need. Mm -hmm. You're right, but if you speak to myself, Tim, or any of the sales team, they're all very, very well capable of mm. really being able to guide you down that path of the product and not even have to worry about which particular model really just, you should be just looking Just got at. a quick question, actually. Yeah. Um, you talk about kinematics. Yeah. What do you mean? Or, you know, what is it? Could you explain? Yeah, it's the particular construction of the machine, whether the head's moving, whether the table's moving. It's the where the, the moving components are of the machine tool. Now we're running out of time, um, but I, I, we, we've got to cover the monoblocks because uh, Paul and I have been very fortunate to be with uh, DMG Mori in front and, and uh, you know, listening to the guys in the factory. I mean, you've got over 5,000 machines worldwide. I mean, it must be one of the best selling machine tools. Why, why is that? Uh, monoblock, popular machine because of its price to performance ratio, really. Um, it's built in a volume now that we can even drive that, that price value even down even further. And there's a new addition, as you probably know, to the monoblock range, which is the monoblock horizontal machine. And I think the two of you did see at the last Fronten open house. But uh, that machine, uh, you've got three axis movement in the spindle, and then you've got basically a trunnion table in front of the spindle that can be configured with a single side drive or a double side drive, depending on your application, speak to the sales team and we can... And is it the 75 now, which is, which is the most popular or most sold machine now, isn't it? The 75 is quite popular because it's built down a particular production track without that many options that we can have on that machine. So we can get the flow of the production Just quite Just to point quick. out, there are four of those on our stock list. Yeah. Why, why would you, Tim, look at the difference between a cradle and a, a knuckle table? Because these can, are two different... Yeah, I mean, um, the, the choice, is, it, it, it can be a difficult one sometimes, but you look at the style of components. For example, a BLISC, uh, an aerospace BLISC, that would be much more effectively produced uh, on a monoblock, and the component that we can just see on the edge there, mm. you might not see it so great, the one near is you, yeah. that's just showing a, a small section of, of, of an internal of a BLISC yeah. type profile. And is that because with the cradle you've got the support both yeah. sides, you've got the driving mechanism That's right, you can, have a tw you can have the twin, the twin drive because you're going to need a lot of torque if you're in titanium. Mm. Now, uh, tomorrow we're going to be going into some specific machines, yes. uh, which, which would be great. Uh, is, is there anything else that you want to cover on loads. the five axis? Loads. You're Sorry, you're running out of time. Program. So. Uh, DMF. Uh, this is, I mean, you talk about the DMC monoblock, yeah. the horizontal five axis has a good, good market for you. I can see some, uh, some real success there. But the DMF, this is a machine that has been um, available for some time. This kind of travelling column, high speed, X axis. Uh, it's driven on, on linear motor technology as yeah. well. This is a, a kind of a production five axis travelling column machine, isn't it, Kevin? It's yeah, that's right. There's quite a range of machines from there. So we go from uh, 180, 200. 300, 360, we end up on that range of machines. So, as you say, pendulum machining. Pendulum machining, possible, yeah. We've got a nice uh, area where we can basically put a, uh, a Down wall the in. Yeah. And you can move on to the left hand side of the wall or the right hand side. It's, of it's the wall. almost like a, a, a twin pallet. Great, great machine. Seen them in action. Um, can't finish this without talking. I think we're going to be perfect for time in here. Uh, the DMC portal machines and the gantries, mm. uh, up to 40 metres in the x-axis on, on some of your gantry machines. So I'm immediately thinking of, you know, tools for cars, you know, um, yeah. and things like that. That's where that would fit, isn't it, Tim? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we've, we have a couple of 340s in the UK which are actually do, uh, doing that, um, car body machining, that, that area. Yeah. And one thing to stress as well is that backed up with your own finance, uh, all your solutions, not just the milling, uh, you could effectively uh, buy a machine and not pay a penny for six months and the amount of money that you can actually earn in that time is quite phenomenal, isn't it? It is. We're not just um, confining you to the smaller machines for that. You know, you could go right up to a 600 gantry if you wished and have the same arrangement. And the incredible thing is uh, some of the machines we talked about today are available from stock, which is a lot of what this programme is about. So need to contact the guys at DMG Mori to find out exactly what machines um, are available. Sure. Yeah, I think we just about, um, well, there is the M NMH series, five axis horizontal as well. But well, you, you, we're gonna, you could spend an hour yeah, here, couldn't you, yeah, yourself? But, uh, look, um, I think we need to move this on. Um, we're going to be talking about turning uh, next, but um, 
I, I just want to say that, you know, from, from a milling capabilities, it must be your best-selling range, milling, isn't it, out, out of everything? Yeah, it's nice to work for the company because, you know, you can go into any company within reason and you've got something to offer. Well, I think that sums it up. But these guys will be back uh, on the sofa tomorrow looking at specific machines. Now we're going to shortly be talking about turning.
Turning products have developed considerably over the last few years and DMG Mori now offer over 65 machine models in their turning range. Before the team carry on, remember that the benefit of this whole event is that DMG Mori UK have great availability of hand-picked core product due to the success of last year's live event that you can get your hands on. So that's enough from me, let's dive into the turning range. Welcome back here to uh, DMG Mori Coventry, their HQ, their showroom. Um, please send your questions in. We're getting quite a few come in now, which is great. But now we're going to be talking about turning. I'm here with Dane and also Martin. Uh, you, you guys are uh, obviously got a, a big portfolio of machines. I think it's 64 in the turning range. No, 68, slightly more si than the milling. Yeah. Ah, okay. Well, like obviously I've, I've got the wrong, <laughs> wrong number written down, actually, or, or obviously not listened properly. One of the two. But um, before we kick the, this off, uh, uh, turning is a is a big part of uh, uh, the industry, isn't it? Uh, and when you look at that type of range, how, how do you go about actually selecting the right machines? Um, talk to the customer. It's quite an important aspect of it. Um, listen to what he's got to say um, and get past the first part that he wants to look at because that might just be uh, the one that starts the inquiry off. It might not be the be all and end all. So it's listening to him and working out what he really wants, not just for now, but a little bit further down the line. So it's 12 months, two years to sort of give him the, the stepping stone, the elbow room to be able to manufacture a very large range of components ne if necessary. I mean, we've got um, just over 20 minutes and we've got a lot of machines to cover again. So we're <laughs> going to be, we're going to sort of maybe group them into sections. Um, and Dane, you, you cover the, the Sunderland area, I believe, or right the way down to St. Neitz. As, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, now, I just want to look at the three product group ranges, the Sprint, the Wasino, and the Multi Sprint. Now, I know this is, more in, in your yes. area, uh, Martin. These are machines that um, are about production, aren't they? They're production machines yep. in, in a sense. Um, the Sprint, talk to us about that model because it's something that, in fact, I believe I sold many, many years ago a, a Sprint in its, in its early days, but we were talking about high volume manufacturing of kind of adapter hydraulic components then. Yeah, similar well, area. originally the Sprint was called the Speed. That was the sliding head version. Uh, the Sprint was a, a hybrid uh, so you didn't need to use um, ground or peeled bar, you could just use straightforward uh, bar, so uh, into production. Um, the models changed, uh, combinations were brought together, so the best of the sprint and the best of the uh, speed became the sprint range. So we have multi-spindle, uh, we have, sorry, the sliding head, which most people don't even realise that it's actually well, quite an important model to us. Sliding head technology, we talk about it a lot on uh, MTD CNC, mm -hmm. and because it's becoming, the technology's advancing so much, those machines are becoming very, very flexible, and they're yes. fitting into areas of industry where they, they never used to. Are you, are you witnessing that too? We are. Um, the uh, sort of the bone screw you see in the uh, middle of the table there, it's one of the typical sort of parts, you see medical parts and things of that nature. Um, shafts on the machines up to 600 millimeters as uh, the standard option selection on the uh, the shaft sort of extraction that we can do um, but then down to very small diameters um, you won't be doing that kind of length at one millimeter but turning one millimeter is quite quite uh, I think it's important for our audience to know that you're, you're in that area as well and the Wasini Wasino that's a machine that I it, we saw it at Fronton I saw it at Fronton and I was like wow that's quite quite a neat tidy small fast, all those things in a, but highly accurate as well, isn't it? It is. It's the sort of machine that comes out of the box. So you turn it on in the morning, regardless of the temperature you have in the uh, factory. The worst uh, machine is a five micron variation across the range. Mm. And the best is around two. So you turn it on and it remains accurate. And the little shaft that's just stood up uh, on its own with the large collar in the middle, um, that component is traditionally has a, a number of holes in it and a thread put on the end. It's not quite finished that one, uh, but it then goes to be ground. Uh, and there's thousands and thousands made. 
but using the Wasino with um, auto loading and with a, our uh, Paternoster style automation uh, solution for storing the parts as they go through, so the volume's there, because you don't want to be going in every five minutes to change the things over, you can actually replace grinding. So you're eliminating an op or a process as a result of that machine, that's pretty fascinating. Well, can I just ask you a question sorry, actually? Yeah. <laughs> When you look at the technology behind uh, DMG Mori, is this driven very much from your customers? Yeah, well, you know, when, when customers come to us and they've got, you know, they're, they're looking for a machine, uh, a lot of it is we've got to look at what the application is. Uh, a lot of it these days is uh, application driven. When you've got 64 different or 68 different machines, <laughs> uh, we have quite a, quite a lot of lap over. Uh, from traditional, what were traditional DMG machines, what were traditional Mori. Since we've been, since we're together, uh, we've now got a different range with the CLX. Um, so a lot of it, it's, we can cover all aspects. Uh, but like I said, it, it's what they traditionally think they should use to machine a part is not always, is not always the case. That with the advancement in technologies, it's not always the case. Um, and, and the knowledge that you guys have is so important because it's so often I go in companies and I look at ways they're doing things and I think you, you're not doing that in the, in the right way, you're really not, but they're kind of closed into how they've been doing it for many years and they don't often look outside of the box do they as to how they could achieve better no, results. I mean, I mean we're all engineers and you get one engineer will do a job differently to another yeah. engineer, it's all, it's all, everybody's got a different mindset and it's usually how they've, how they've been brought up. Yeah. Um, you generally all get to the same conclusion, it's just who, who's yeah. going to get there faster. Yeah, you get, you, you get the end <laughs> yeah. result, but you know, there's, there's a lot of companies now, they only do the things the way they do because yeah. of the technology they've got. Yeah. Yeah, you, know, right. you give them new technology, mm. they can do it quicker, they can do it faster, uh, and that's, as a business, that's what DMG Mori is all about. We'll, we'll come on to the machines that you mentioned there, the CLX and and uh, shortly, I just want to conclude with yourself, Martin, on the, on the multi-sprint as well. And when I said on the last machine about eliminating a process, what I meant was eliminating an operation because you've, you've got yes. grinding on the machine as, as, as well as turning. Multi-sprint, multi-spindle machines here, six spindles, um, yes, six spindles yeah. all doing a different operation. Yes. And essentially what happens is every time you get a finished part. Yes, very much so. Um, but they're sliding head capability. So you're, you have, that, hence the multi-sprint, it's uh, that sort of functionality. Um, you can eat, so you can have that. Uh, you could also, if you so desired, have the machine with a single or twin uh, FANUC robot built in uh, with either the single or twin counter spindle. Mm -hmm. And you can use it like a little rotary transfer machine uh, to produce parts in that sort of manner. So it doesn't have to be, come from the bar feed, it can come from uh, a part that's pre-cast or something or preformed in that sort of manner and, and worked I, in that I, manner. I think with these machines, what's always been a bugbear, I think, of some engineers is the time it takes to set them for different parts. Mm -hmm. But I know that's reducing nowadays as well, isn't Incredibly it? Incredibly so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, even the most complex, like the multi-sprint, uh, they've been uh, reduced uh, the setup times, uh, the format of how you do things. We're not sort of saying, here you go, here's a machine, and go away and happily learn it. You could take, if you're a multi-spindle, uh, which we still make, by the way, if you're a uh, multi-spindle uh, user, manufacturer, user manufacturer, the multi-sprint can give you another dimension. So instead of starting another shop, which might be the sprint, yeah. the multi-sprint can give you your multi-spindle and that in the same footprint. Yeah. They're, they're sort of moving on, because uh, we, we've got a demo on the uh, NLX uh, behind you guys uh, that, that, that we've actually taken. Now, th this, is, this is a very popular machine, isn't it, for you guys? It, it, the NLX in the is, yeah. Why is that? Well, a lot, of our, a lot of our existing customers will have old SL machines. Uh, the NLX, the SL went to the NL, the NL went to the NLX. It's not really messed about with it that much you know if it if it you know if it's not broke don't don't fix it um, it's a solid boxware machine it's really it's the workhorse uh, we would say the NLX range uh, if you want to take a big big depth of cut tough materials it's not you know it's not a problem um, so where but, do you differentiate them between the CLX and the NLX well <laughs> 
they've, they've got slightly different controls on. You know, you've got the base control underneath it, but the MLX range of machines, um, they are, that has the CLOS uh, production control on the front. Um, it's, the NLX is more for, high, I would say, high precision, high precision, heavy duty, but you can still do heavy duty cutting on, on, on the CLX. The CLX, is a linear, the CLX range is a linear guardway machine, whereas the NLX is boxway. Uh, some people get a lot of hang up between linear guardways and boxway, thinking boxway is more rigid, but with the advancement in linear guideways, you know, compared to 20 years ago, um, a linear guideway machine can cut just as rigid as what a box worker. Good, good question coming in. Uh, is there a three turret solution turning centre? Yes, the NZ, um, the NZX machine. So it's a part of the same family. We also have the uh, beta versions. Uh, so you can configure it um, and, and a sprint version, actually, a three turret a sprint yeah. version. So, but again, they're set out for slightly different uh, applications. Uh, you have uh, the sprint, which again, the volume sort of side of it, where you have uh, all the automation. When you spec it, it comes with the unloading equipment and everything you need. Mm -hmm. So you just need to stick a bar feed on the right size that you want, yeah. and you're away. Um, the betas and the uh, NZs are, again, dependent on what you wish. Uh, if you want a FANUC, it's NZ. If you want a Siemens, it's a beta. So fundamentally, you have the functionality uh, and equipment ranges from either side. When you look, and I'm, I'm going to ask Dane this question because he's on the, on the road in his territory selling these machines. One of the inherent risks of bringing in new products that maybe they are different, but they're close, is that you will erode a market of, say, the NLX because you're going to start to sell more CLXs. So therefore, the sales in the NLX comes down. Um, that's a possible risk. Has that happened, or will you just sell more machines because now you've got both? Well, uh, well Steve, uh, Steve would have us selling more machines, uh, but it's not always it's not always the case. You've got to look at what the customer's trying to do. Um, like I said, it's and you've got to look at what the customer's budget as well, because there's no point going in with a machine at 200 grand if he's only got 100 grand to spend. Because you know, it'd be the best machine in the world, but if, if they can't afford it, uh, even on the finance side, um, so a lot of it you've got to look at what he's, what he's trying to do. Uh, the CLX falls more in a more into a job shop kind of environment. Uh, the NLX you can put an NLX in a job shop, but obviously, there's a difference price tag between them. Yeah. So, because there's a difference price tag, usually we sell more NLX to like OEM customers. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, on the screen now, you've got uh, CLX. You know, it, it, it's uh, it's a fantastic machine, isn't it? The way it's actually designed, the way the, the way they put this together was actually show you. you the, the, this is actually a, a new model for right. the, the tool change range, hence TC. The NTX comes into that sort of, of family as well. Yeah. Um, but again, it's the standard range, like the CLX on the turning, the CMX on the milling. Uh, and this CLX is part of the, effectively the standard range of machines yeah. and the NLX is part of the premium range so the pages of options on these machines is somewhat smaller so you can make more of them because you, you sort of say that it, it fits what you want Mr Customer, it does 95% of everything you want and it gives you a 10% greater flexibility the others you can select from pages of options and that's where re we really need to spend more time with you uh, and sort of identify where it is because there are specialist sort of solutions that we have, whether it's as a simple as an app on the CLOS yeah. or uh, for eccentric turning or gear skiving, uh, like the uh, gear at the front, or um, even grinding on the machine. So you're combining that with the machine. And we don't mean as a, uh, a sort of something we just added. I mean, it's properly integrated into the equipment whereas the, the CLX you've just shown doesn't quite have all those uh, options. A bit of a uh, changing question. Uh, do, do you do a turn mill machine with additive in it? There is. Uh, there is a machine. Um, it's been, um, there's not many of them in truth about because the machine that uh, one of my other colleagues, a couple of my other colleagues are going to talk about uh, later is uh, the additive, the 3D additive, uh, hot, that, that sort of side of it where we can add material to it 
Uh, it is about, it's based on the uh, um, NT4300 size machine um, and it works extremely well. But it, again, it's, we have so many others that it has to be the right, as Dan says, although we have to listen, we have to also lead it for by the application that's a tricky a, one. Who, who, who wants, wants a tricky say, question? Uh, at 11.40, we're going to be talking to Terry and Rob on the additive manufacturing side, uh, talking about power beds. So that's coming up at 11.40. So who wants a tricky question? Martin. <laughs> no, I was, I was just thinking about the, the speed of development of products. Okay, it's no secret, it's clear, it's evident that you're continually bringing out new models and, and new ranges. Is there ever a customer that says, oh, I bought a new machine, it was new technology last year, and now you've bought out something else that's kind of superseded it? Or is it a case of a bit like the iPhone, even though they bring one out every six months, people still want it? Uh, people still want it, it's very true. Um, and you're right, uh, sometimes it is a matter of fact that you've um, bought it out, but, uh, and it it has new features but you can't afford to stand still yeah. there are the, uh, the the CLX range the standard range is still lots of development but at not the, the pace that you have with the premium range so um, if you're buying a CLX it'll probably be exactly the same sort of machine in a couple of years time in three years time it may be completely different again but the numbers of options available with the uh, premium range like the uh, NLX uh, NTXR star machine uh, and the TC machines, um, they're forever uh, building on those because of customer demand. Mm -hmm. so, talking about materials, uh, we, we've got a good question uh, from our audience. Uh, with the turning rage, what can cut harder materials like Inconel? Within all of them. All of them? All yeah. of them. We don't make a machine specific to turning, oh this one's only for aluminium, that one's for steel, this one's for Inconel. You can, uh, on the machine behind us, you can take aluminium, yep. steel, stainless steel, duplex, inconol, yeah, and so can yeah. all the others. It's in cutting the strategies as well, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, we don't, yeah. we yeah. don't sell hard metal, hard metal cutting machines, soft metal cutting machines. It's, yeah. it's the machine, you know, the, whatever you're cutting, it's down to, your, it's down to your tooling. And please remember, we have um, uh, many things coming up. Uh, is, is additive. We're also going to be talking about my DMG Mori and the insurance side and also finance because you know talking about the stock machines that are coming in you've got a, a number of turning options coming through and I'm, I'm sure the finance can really help um, a, a new customer uh, buy into DMG Mori and, and maybe take that perception away they, they can afford a DMG Mori. Yeah I mean I think I've said it before one of the biggest problems that we have as a business is the perception that everybody knows DM, you know, everybody knows DMG, everybody knows New Morisiki. As a business, DMG Mori, people know us, they associate us with quality, you know, very high quality, but usually it's a very high very high price tag. Um, we're not cheap, we know that, but you get you get what you pay for. Yeah. Um, but I think a lot of people think that our range of machines is out of you know is out of their budget, no, but you know what we would say is just you know come and talk to us because mm. we have got such a massive range we have got yeah. we have got something and it's not it's a case of well we've just got something that's cheap and cheerful we'll give you it from that range you know the, the well, machines I, I, I think Steve said it all you know 43 percent of your sales last year was new business yeah so and um, the CTX uh, the NTX and the NT. The, these are really mouth-watering machines, aren't they? The, I, I reviewed the CTX, I think it's the, the Gamma, at Fronten last year. One of the things that I was really impressed with, and, and correct me if I'm, I'm wrong maybe here, Martin, was the head technology on the, on the milling side. Very compact, um, so if you're tipping left or right or however it is, you're not um, intruding in, or you're not using up much work in envelope, are you? But, you, but you've still got the performance and the power that you would expect from a much bigger spindle. Yes, I mean, the, the beta version of that is uh, sort of um, 130 newton meters of torque. The gamma one, even though it's the compact head, it's only 370 mil long compared with the 350 of the, uh, of the beta, um, it's 220 newton meters at the insert, not sort of uh, vagaries of it at the insert. Well, I found we had so much technology in such a small footprint.
footprint with that machine. If yeah. I rem remember correctly, you had the, the tool changer on, on to the left, which you could see and you could, you know, you had a lot of tools in there as well, yes. didn't you? So you, your ability to do one hit machining of complicated parts was in a very sm small footprint. But then you stepped up if you wanted to go beyond that up to the, up to the NTX and the NT, is that correct? Uh, the NT6600 uh, is by far the largest, um, seven, uh, a metre and 70 mil turning diameter uh, and up to six metres long. So yes, you can appreciate that's uh, in that sort of range, it's uh, quite a large machine. Uh, the gamma up to three metres. Uh, both machines can have long boring bars to change automatically in metre lengths uh, and have the end of the boring bar automatically changed from the magazine that you said is there on the left. They're both configured in the same sort of manner. Because I also think that's so important with that type of machine to be able to machine some of these high value parts in one operation, isn't it? You start taking out these big chunky components and moving them across to the milling section or you, you, yeah, you're, you're yeah. essentially introducing more risk into the process, aren't you? So the more you can do on one machine, mm -hmm. um, then is, you know, is ideal, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, in the UK, there's a massive skill shortage of engineers. So, you know, usually you've got one guy operating more than, more than one machine. So the way people start looking at manufacturing now is they want to put the raw material in, press cycle start, and when it comes back, it's finished. Yeah. And yeah. You know, I know it sounds ideal, but yeah. these are the type of the machines where you can do it. You know, you, you've got a main spindle, you've got a counter spindle, uh, you've got a tool changer. You know, you can have, I think on the NTX, you can have up to nearly 300 tools. So, you know, it's even really tool, complex yeah. parts, you can put automation on it. So it's all about letting the machine do the work while the guy's off doing, doing something else. How about driven tooling? How, 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 how much is that, that, does that impact on a sale these days? It can impact a lot um, from a, a technical point of view because more and more parts uh, have the combinations. As you said, you don't want to feed it around the shop, potential loss of part, downtime caused by issues, accuracies. So combining it really does make a big difference. So. Um, the variety of uh, because people still like designing with lots of different uh, tapped holes in it, holes to do various things, gallery holes and so on. So having the functionality to be able to combine all of those tools, even the CL little CLX that you saw, the 450, with up to 60 tools uh, from the 30 tool standard, that gives you an exceptional amount of flexibility. And of course, it's not just pointing in one direction. You haven't sort of with the um, uh, the Analex and the CLX start machines, they're turret mounted, so you can have multiple tools on one, double ended and so on, but this means they can be at any angle, full five axis contouring is capable, so as much as any of the five axis machining centres. Dave, you, 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 you traditionally look, at, uh, look after a patch that maybe it has been one of the hardest, I would say, in the north, trying to sell new concepts, new machines, new brands, but I must admit, when we on our travel teams in the area I'm not well. talking about football with you, okay? Chelsea are playing tonight. <laughs> um, so what I'm trying to say is, is that once you've got your foot in the door with one machine, others do follow, because we've seen that when on our travels. Yeah, uh, you know, people look at, you know, might want to start off with just a standard turret lathe, uh, but then, you know, ultimately, everybody looks at, well, I'd like, you know, I'd like a mill turn, um, which, yeah, you know, we, we can do, the, the old, you know, on the mill turns we've got the NTXs, the, the NTs, um, but this is why we've brought out the CLX for uh, 50 TC. It's that's to fit in a market because it's not a true full five axis. No. It's 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 an indexing head. It's now, axis positional. There's, yeah. that gives it a big difference between the NTX and, and the and the CTX TCs a full five axis. Not everybody needs full five axis. Sure. And and yeah. that and but. You've got to pay the. You've got to, if you want it, you've got to pay the price for it. So, what we can do is, you know, you can start off with one machine. We, I mean, we don't just do it on turning. We do it on. We do it on milling as yeah, well. Sure, you know, yeah. it's what people tend to. What customers tend to, to find is that if they get good service, good response, and they've got a good machine, you go. You go back to. You know, it's it just in life. If you buy anything, you know, if you get good service from a shop. Uh, if you want something else, you go back to that shop. And that's what we, that's what we try and aim for.
we've, we've got a number of um, questions coming in which might not be able to answer, but uh, uh, they've just joined the stream. Uh, is there a sliding head range? Now, if you've got any other questions, Charlie Lucas, uh, her email will come up on the screen. Please send uh, your questions to Charlie, which will pass on to, to the, uh, the, the experts in front of us on turning here. Um, it, it's been quite a... a, a interesting to look at the overview of the turning solutions tomorrow we're going to be looking at, at, at actual machines did we, um, miss Sorry? did we miss anything no i don't uh, think so well we've done quite well in, in 20 minutes there's, there's still some that aren't on that list that we gave you in the original yeah, yeah. Okay. because it, as i said come and talk to us that's the important thing yeah. Now we're going to change a bit of tact actually, we're, we're at 11.40 we're going to be talking about additive manufacturing and powder bed uh, with Terry and Rob, join us then
Additive manufacturing is becoming an integral part of DMG Mori's machining solutions and to help you understand better, today the team will be exploring powder bed capabilities before tomorrow's segment on hybrid machines. Welcome back to the Coventry showroom of DMG Moray. Now this is a bit of uh, sexy time for me, additive manufacturing. I'm, I'm here with Rob and Terry. Um, now, additive manufacturing is an art. Uh, it is something very, very different. It is still quite new as well, but um, tell me what SLM stands for in your range. So SLM is selective laser melting. So this is our metal additive manufacturing technology. Um, also known as powder bed fusion um, and we are building parts layer by layer fully dense metal parts functional parts and, and when you look at the range Rob what, what do you have to offer manufacturers? So within the SLM technology we have two machines available there's the 12 and the 30 the 12 got the slightly smaller build volume which is 125 by 125 by 200 in the Z the 30 has got 300 cube so it's just, just on the size of what you can actually... Yeah, it's, it's the physical volume. So instead of with subtractive manufacture where we're putting a part on there, with this we need to grow it straight from the powder. So that build volume, if you can fit a part inside of that volume, then we can go away and build it. Conscious of time on this one again, guys. We've got just less than 15 minutes. And also this is an opportunity for the audience watching whatever channel you're watching to get your questions in about additive manufacturing um, on metals. Now, this to me, it's all about these parts. Right, looking at these parts really does highlight where this technology fits. I'm going to start with that tool um, because the one on the far end near you, Rob. This is an, a new way of making a product. Which well, where's the benefits in print? Let's ask you where's the benefits in printing a tool like that? The benefits of printing a tool like that is we can bring features that in the past were difficult to go away and manufacture. Now, because we're making the tool from solid, we can make it hollow so we can reduce the actual weight. So improve the inertia of the product. As you can see from the tubes that come up, they're all hollow, so we can have the coolant go straight to the actual tip or wherever we want to on the tool. So it's more now giving the designers the freedom that they've always craved with the parts and construction of how they want to. So we're no longer held up by subtractive manufacturing methods. Now that's a great demo, but is that being used in real life applications? Do you know? I believe it is, yes. There, there, are, there is a, a, an upcoming application there in, in cutting tools where you've got the light weighting aspect, firstly. So you, you know, you, you better spin the life because you've got a lightweight tool body. Um, you've got the customization aspect as well there with number of inserts, size, you know, just print them out, whatever, you know. Well, when you look at a lot of sectors uh, that, that's available to additive manufacture, you know, who, who are the people that you're really trying to um, put forward this technology? If you, look at, if you look at the additive manufacturing landscape, you know, globally, about 50% of the use of this technology in terms of machine installations and, and what people are doing with it, about 50% of that's taken up by aerospace and medical. But really, it's anything. It's anywhere where you, we can find this, you know, this advantage whereby we have no tools, no fixtures. We're just printing parts. So it's that high variety, high complexity area where it really comes in. Fifty percent in aerospace and medical of the majority of uh, aerospace of and medical takes up about fifty percent of that mm. of that metal additive manufacturing space. Yeah. Now, now Rob, a few years ago, I, I, I visited the company on the south coast and. One thing that was quite interesting, they, they, they took a, a, an additive solution at the time um, and I, talking to the MD and I said, look, you know, uh, I, I'm, you know, I can see that you make a lot of connectors in the, in the marketplace, but wh why would you buy uh, a machine like this? And they said, well, we can't get tool makers anymore. So therefore it de-skills it. Is, is that quite common? I think it's quite common that you can do things with the additive that you could never do before. So with, as far as tool making goes, we can put cooling channels very close to the surface. We can actually improve how a tool would traditionally be manufactured. But now we're seeing a lot more of customers using additive, not only for prototyping, but now leading more into production where the cost benefit allows. There's, there's, there's two areas I want to look at here um, with yourself, Terry. 
cost is one. Um, cost of ownership, let's look at cost of ownership and the speed. Because 3D printing, it, there is areas where people look at um, the differences between additive and subtractive. Should I take a billet and machine it out or should I print it? Okay, there are the obvious benefits that there's no material wastage if you print it. But it can be a, mu a much slower process, can't it? Yeah, if you look at speed, I think on the, on the face of it, if you're looking at volume of metal that you can build per time, then yeah, it looks a very slow process. When you look at it from the point of view that we have no tooling requirements, no fixture requirements, we can design a part and manufacture it pretty much straight away. Mm. The, the total time of design to manufacture of an innovative product or for the change of a product is actually a lot yeah. lower than it is for traditional technologies. But what about then that cost of ownership, looking at the, the, the cost of the machine, the cost of the hardware, mm. the cost of the materials, um, the cost to run? How, how does that compare, or what does it look like? I mean, cost of ownership, I mean, the, the, the technology, what, what we've tried to do with it is to, is to reduce the need for peripheral equipment. So all of the material handling is, is within the machine, so you need the machine and the machine only. Um, so when you're looking at the cost, it's, that's the cost of the system, and that's the system. Yeah, talking about the system, we, we, we was very fortunate, uh, and I've mentioned uh, a few times that we, we've visited Frontum, but you, you launched the Replug system. And, and could you explain to our audience what Replug actually means and, and how it's quite unique? So the Replug system allows customers of the technology how to be adaptive around the material type that they need to build. So traditionally it used to be you had a machine, you had a material. The Replug will allow you in the two hours to take one material, let's say aluminium, away from the machine then plug in a different material, say titanium, in and then start building from scratch. Now the benefit of this is it you're only buying one machine instead of two, but as part of the system and the replug, we allow you to go away and work with your customers or yourselves and design your own materials and we will help you develop the build parameters for that material. But traditionally, customers have needed a separate room, let's say. Yeah, very much so. It's always been a clean room environment, full body PPE. We've tried to do away with that and trying to put the machine in a normal room environment. And it's only really when we need to change the filters and some of the more difficult mechanics that only happen every now and again that we need to stop getting PPE out of the bag. Oh, there's quite a good question there, actually. Excited like about this technology, what's the thinnest wall that can be printed, Terry? very dependent on the application, you know, what you're building and how high that thin wall would, would need to be. Um, what we have on the machine, so the LaserTech 12 SLM has a 35 micron laser spot, that's quite unique in the market um, in terms of thin walls and in terms of accuracy. And then on the dual laser machine we're down to 50 microns on the laser spot. Okay, now size. you talk about the different materials um, that can be printed. Is there better materials than other materials to print like are some materials better to print than others aluminium compared yeah. to an inconel compared to a steel is one faster than the other is the integrity better when it prints what are the limitations in, uh, in that area when you can think of the the processing parameters for the machine has been much like your speeds and feeds for the machine um, you know for different materials it's different the layer thickness that you can achieve to have a certain level of productivity will be different for one material to another um, you know, the laser power that you need and, and how fast you can print each layer will, will change from one material to another. But let's take, let's take aluminium and let's take Inconel. Yeah. It, which one's going to be easiest to print? Aluminium would be faster in that, in that sense. Yeah. What, what, by what percentage roughly? Uh, maybe twice as fast on aluminium. Right. Yeah, on that. What, what about the, um, the dual? Talk to us about the dual uh, where you, you've got essentially two print, printing heads. Is, is that right? So we've got two lasers two inside lasers, the sorry. machine. Yeah, yeah. So what we can do there is not build two separate parts at the same time. We're using the lasers to crisscross the whole volume, but the, each laser knows where the other one has been. So we can actually, every slice, we can halve-ish the time for that build. So my question then about speed, this, that helps with speed, doesn't it? If someone comes to you and says, you're essentially doubling the, uh, or halving a cycle time because you've got two. Sometimes speed is a benefit. Depending on the application, speed isn't always your friend. Right. There's, there's, still a, there's still a market for single laser machines, yeah. but the dual laser is very much about productivity. You know, when you think about the build volume, 300 mil cube, 
Um, it's not just about you have one part that fits within that. You can fill that with multiple parts. Yeah. And where you have two lasers working together, yeah. they can both be melting the same part at the same time or they can be melting a part each. And is um, there a pro processing operation? What do you need to do once it's printed? Just let it cool or is there something else you need to do? The, the, there can be a cool down time at the end, yeah. Depend, you know, you, 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 your print can finish and there's a couple of hours to wait before you can take, take the, the, the parts out, but that's, that's built into the, the costings gonna, that we do for a process. I know we're going to delve into the hybrid uh, uh, tomorrow, but really what we're saying with, uh, with the hybrid, that that is uh, added and subtracted then. Is it? It's yes. bringing all worlds together. So we have the additive, yeah, we have the okay. subtractive, we have metrology. It's yeah. bringing all of the good bits together so we get a really good benefit. The reason I ask is quite a complicated subject, isn't it, additive manufacturing? Because every manufacturer probably has a different version, a different slightly word. Do you call it 3D printing? Do you call it additive ma manufacturing? And obviously you're the experts and it's good for the audience now. It's a good question for you there, Paul. Uh, I'll just, I, I have my own one then. Well, you do your one, I'll do that one then. I want to talk about this part here, we'll come back to that. This part here, that looks a little bit, I can only describe, like Mark's hair. But <laughs> what is it? What have you done? So that, what are you that, trying to show? That one there is a topology optimised wheel carrier in, in motorsport. So that, that's where we've gone through uh, a topology optimization design phase to get the best um, geometry for the, for the application and then having this type of machine allows us to print that out. You know, it's you hollow on the inside, this one, this the one here. Are, yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, the strands that you see going vertically, so that's what we call the support structures. Right. Okay. So because we're building with the inside the powder, yeah. as we're making layer from layer, the part's becoming slightly more dense, so this is to try and stop the part moving across. And what's the thickness of what, what those strands? We, we can vary that depending on the application and how much weight we need to take. So a lot of these processes are all controlled within the software. Mm. Uh, before we move on to um, talking about my DMG uh, uh, and insurance, uh, th there's quite a good question here. Uh, and I'll throw it to Rob, actually, if I may. Uh, can a component be added to, uh, e.g., work holding machine jaws? Can we, sorry? The, the question, uh, one of our audience, uh, can a component be added to? So I suppose Using you... this technology, no. It has okay. to go into the bed and we have to grow it from scratch. Tomorrow, very much so. That will right. be where we can start yeah. off with some material and we can add to that. And, and as we know, uh, th this is quite an expensive manufacturing uh, product, but with the DMG Mori Finance, does it also roll out into the, 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 the hybrid and also the power bed machines? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, the the technology is accessible in the same way that all of our other technologies are in that regard. We can finance machines, we have stock machines. Um, we've got another question. Due to weld melt, is there a grain structure harder than, say, Inconel 625, Rob? Or Terry? Terry? Due to weld melt, is there a grain structure harder than, say, Inconel 625? Um, I'm not sure exactly what, the, what that question means there. Um, Inconel 625 is one of our harder materials. In terms of hard materials, we're looking at Inconel 625, Inconel yeah. 7, 18, tool steel. Right. Um, we're doing a lot with tool steel whereby we print and then it's, it's, yeah. it's ready to be used as a tool I, steel. I just want to ask one more question, and I know we're quite tight for time. Integrity of parts um, in flying aircraft, in cars, there's been talk over recent years of you know how soon is it going to be that they can make parts in aircraft. And I know that's happening at the moment, isn't it, it Rob? But, but what is the integrity of these parts and how do they measure it? So a lot of the parts that come off in order to fit onto airframe, the OEM, Airbus, Boeing, they will go through and ultrasonically check a lot of the parts. And then once that has been proven that we have a consistent process, at that point then it can be passed off. So that tends to be on flight critical systems. So engines, wing spars, that type of uh, devices but even internally on seats the, the technology is growing of a pace it used to be the premise of prototyping now as you can see from a nozzle we're now using it ourselves in production because we can have a more elegant design with less parts weighs less cost less so it is in critical uh, critical areas very much so yes so one example on a, an air an aero engine the fuel um, injectors they're all now additively made Okay, moving on. 
we're going to be talking about uh, DM, my DMG Mori and insurance next. Uh, these guys are going to be back on the sofa tomorrow talking yep. about hybrid. Uh, what have you learned from additive manufacturing today? Absolutely loads. Well, there you go. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, re I'm really fascinated. I was interested in the, 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 the cutting tool side and interested to find out whether it is actually being used because it's a terrific demo. I can see the advantages in lighter weight tools, internal cooling chambers, but just wanted to find out whether it is actually in, in real life and it's good to hear it is. At 12 o'clock, we'll be back talking about my DMG Mori and also insurance.
So My DMG Mori gained plenty of attention after the last live event, as those who were watching saw the benefits the portal holds for their company and decided it would help with the day-to-day -day efficiency of managing their machines and business. So the team will be covering this and the benefits of DMG Mori Insurance in more detail. As always, any questions, send them in. Over to you, Mark and Lindsay. Welcome back to the Coventry showroom of DMG Mori. Thank you very much, Paul. What a lovely change. Yeah. Much better than looking at Paul, I've got to say. I've got to say. Thank you. Um, now, we're here on the sofa with um, John and James. We're going to be talking about my DMG Murray and also the insurance. Yeah, so um, let's begin with my DMG Murray now. It's an incredible fact. After the last live event, you had 50 people sign up for this. So, John, what's the draw and what is my DMG Murray? Well, the, the, the draw is, is that at one point you can see through a portal on your PC or on a mobile device, your product, your machine, what's going on with it in relationship to servicing, the manuals, and you can see basically uh, any support that you've had for that machine. So if you want to log a call, you can do that as well. So for people who don't know what my DMG Mori is, essentially it's a portal that, what would have people done before this portal? Okay, so before you would have rang in, you would have held on the phone, you would have waited for someone to come free whilst the, the, the expert was talking to someone else. Uh, you would be waiting for a call back, but with the portal you just log your call and immediately it's sent through and the service expert has it and it's prioritised in front of him, ready to focus on that one job to sort your machine out. So is it like a, a, a virtual service then? It's like a virtual service desk, yes. So you can log your call and, and it's there. You can log it in the evening. And so, for instance, we log it, say, 8 o'clock when there's no one around. And then in the morning when everyone starts up, you can be rung first thing and fix your machine over, over the way as possible. So you're kind of almost like beating the queue, almost. It's a bit of a more modern technique and a... a, a yeah, more modern way of dealing with yourself. So can you tell me what is going on within the portal then? What's it logging? What information is creating and what benefit is that to an engineer? Okay, so, so within the portal, as we've discussed, you can log your call. So you can log a fault, you can log it for application spares or a breakdown. So that's the key function of it. But also there's a library of all your manuals. So you don't have to look for them. You can just get your operators to go in and find the manual they want without all that time wasting. Also, you've got invoices, all your service reports, your geometric reports. So if the machine goes wrong and you want to have a see what someone did to fix it previously, you can have a look. And it's all their central point of contact. And also machines, you can have specific information. So if you've got setups for certain jobs, you can have that allocated that you can have a look so you can use it to assist you in setting up your machine and looking after and keeping your spindle running are, are people paying for this because you, you you know you told us 50 people signed up for it so who can get their hands on it so anyone who owns a dmg mori machine has it free of charge and all you need to do is to log with charlie and then we can set it up and then basically what you do is you have a administrator on site and from that point on, you can decide who you want access, what access you want for different people. But I, it is free. I suppose in a, in a way, it's collecting a lot of data for DMG Murray, isn't it? To, to actually understand about their technology in it and improve it. Yeah, it's the data is collected. Every part of data that we use commercially is then accessible for the customer to see. So basically, it's just a view of our databases of what we see. And so the customer has the same information. Have you got any examples of how it's helped a customer and how it's changed the way they're working? Um, I, one was uh, the, the, in the one with the ventilator time. Mm -hmm. Basically, the, one of the machines broke down in the evening, so they logged a call at eight, to eight or nine o'clock in the evening. So we came in straight away. We saw what it was for and who it was because we knew what they were doing. So we were able to look at the fault, and we were at that time to get an engineer the same day to them because we had early notification when we started to work in the morning. So, you know, an example there of where 
normally they would have had to ring in, wait, and then go through the process and the engineers may have already gone elsewhere but because it was logged in the evening they saw it first thing when they started at the computer and could divert an engineer to the ventilator project so that was one in particular. It's kind of creating a closer relationship with you DMG yeah. Mori and the customer at the end of the day that's what you're doing. That's right because we share more information with each other and then that means that we can help each other. When you, when you look at the, uh, the, the number of uh, machines that you've got in the field, some of them I would imagine are, are, are a lot older. Can, yeah. can that be used on some of the older machines? As long as it's a DMG Mori machine, the age is, not, is irrelevant. It's you'll any have machine. Spares, you'll have parts for those yeah. machines. Yeah. Be, 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 before we move on to insurance, is there anything else you want to ask? No, I'm happy, yeah. I get, I understand. Now, James, welcome to the, the sofa. Um, Thank you, now, Mark. I know you're the DMG Mori finance expert, but part of that is the insurance because I know you put some very, very big packages together for, for customers to help justify the actual um, technology to drive their, their company forward. But insurance is a big integral part of that, isn't it? It is, Mark. I mean, I think it's really important that when we work with a customer, we want to ensure that the investment pays back. And you know, accidents can happen, customers can have crashes, which will obviously put a stop to production. Um, the last thing we want is for a customer's cash flow to be impaired. So really, the, the, the absolute driver of using insurance is to run it alongside a preventative maintenance contract through John. And we can then give customers with the financing just one single cost in reality and give them fixed cost machining for the duration of the contract. Um, so, uh, how does the insurance work? Where, where does it start? Where does it finish with yourselves? I think fundamentally the insurance element, along with preventative maintenance, that's a, a project which almost commences once the customer's made a decision to invest with DMG Mori, mm -hmm. and from the financing side would have put the environment together to, to make that happen. And then at that point, John will sit with the customer and understand how long he'll be machining for, what type of shift pattern, uh, and then we can come alongside of that, extend the warranty out to six years on milling machines, okay. out to five years on turning machines, and at the same time, put in an operator error insurance in from day one. Because, I mean, w w we've travelled around the UK and, and Europe and the world, and we, we see a lot of uh, companies um, with very high spec machines like the DMG Mori solutions and I've been at a machine tool shop I'm not going to name the brand where unfortunately a younger person has had a crash and it's an awful sound and it to me it just sounds pound notes uh, yes without a shadow of a doubt but the bigger issue is that if we can actually take that risk away from the customer that he makes one phone call DMG Mori come in OEM parts first time fix and the bill gets looked after without disrupting the business and the cash flow that's really, really important. Uh, and if you're listening to any uh, of, of this message from, from these guys in reference to the products, certainly on the insurance uh, and my DMG Murray, send your questions in to Charlie Lucas. Charlie will pass them over to, 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 to these gentlemen and hopefully answer them. But, uh, you know, insurance is quite integral, isn't it? Yes. Have you got any examples as well? Because, you know, I have been out, I have visited your customers. And, you know, if you are talking about a small company, there, you know, you get the finance deal, and I know we're going on to finance in a moment, but will they be able to afford the insurance? You know, is it, do they see that figure and go, oh, is that going to be scary to me? And who's going to take it out? The blue chip companies or the one man band? Lindsay, we've got customers from one man bands up to OEMs. Every, every company has fundamentally the same driver, and that is to protect their cash flow and mitigate against risk. Mm, that's true. I mean, I mean, I mean to me, if, I, if I'm. If I'm uh, I don't know, maybe the average sale, maybe £300,000 of your machines. Why would you not take insurance when human error does happen, James? It, it can happen. It's, it's almost unavoidable when metal touches metal. Um, so, yes, we put the, 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 the procedures in place to help our customers move forward with confidence. Uh, and I suppose it's a, a, a lot of your uh, connections uh, and all the sales guys here at DMG Moray, it's a collaboration. The, these products are there to help your customers, aren't they? Well, uh, fundamentally, we're going to touch on this in, in the finance and element. Yeah, DMG Mori is a solutions provider. And that starts from right at the outset in understanding what a customer's machining requirements will be, technical requirements, 
right the way to how the machine's financed, and then how we look after it through its total life. Thanks, gents. Um, coming up at 12.15, James is going to be with us on the sofa talking about finance. So if you have any questions that you want to ask directly to James, please send them through to Charlie, Lucas, and hopefully we can answer them in the studio to you.
Murray UK claim that nobody in the world can finance a machine like they can. The core of this event is how DMG Mori have their own finance book which gives them greater flexibility to match a perfect finance solution to a company's requirement. Over the next session you will hear of some extraordinary case studies that DMG Mori have delivered to customers. James Clist joins the MTD CNC team on the sofa to explain all. Welcome back to the Coventry showroom here at DMG Mori UK. We've uh, delighted to have James uh, Clist. Now, James, uh, we've known each other uh, near as long as uh, I've known Steve Finn, and it's, it's, a, it's a long time. But the, the, the finance angle of, of the business uh, it, it is very important to DMG Mori, isn't it? Yeah, without a doubt, Mark, it's changed a number of times. Um, for a number of years, we, we'd worked with different banks, finance houses, which were related to what had happened through Group previously in, in Germany. Um, but whilst this was going on, DMG Mori Finance was a business which was thriving in Germany, uh, and we were able to gain access to that through a lot of support from my colleagues in Germany back in 2017. Now, um, I've known James quite a while. In fact, I, I started off in this industry working. Uh, for James and then moved on to DMG Mori. Um, now, earlier today in the show, Steve opened the show and he, he said, nobody in the world can finance the, the way that DMG Mori can finance. So what does he mean by this? I think what, it, what Steve means by saying that is that we, we approach this from the bottom up. So the girls in the office in Germany who provide an excellent service understand what the machines are. The people in the underwriting department will understand, for example, a CMX50U, they'll know that that's a five axis machine. They'll understand that they clamp a job once and it takes labor out of the job, which helps the financial justification. And this runs right the way through. So understanding machines, understanding what it does for our customers, that's why we're different. And you see, and I always, I've said this to you before, James, you see a deal differently to what maybe the banks would see. So how does that, go along to, you know, to the end user? How do, what do they see differently as an end result? I think fundamentally we look forwards and not look backwards. Um, of course, a company set of financials will be assessed, but more importantly, we'll, we will look and understand what a machine will do for a company, what the workers that sit behind it, the contract, and the savings that the production will, will create for this customer. Now, um, Steve also uh, stated that 43% uh, of sales last year was new business. How much was that used in the finance element? Um, well, to, to finance, 43% of total sales um, is a high figure. Um, it says an awful lot about the way that, that Steve and his team work. Um, we spent an awful lot of time over the years working to help customers right the way through the process. Because, Mark, as you know, things have changed. It's no longer about selling a piece of cast iron. It's about nailing absolutely the technical application. But what we do alongside of that is bring in the commercial environment as well. So I've been out to lots of customers, and it does excite me quite a lot because uh, we're going to bring up an example in just a few moments' time of how you have been able to literally transform a business. Um, but we are talking a lot about the government scheme bills we're talking about bounce back loans and it is a really exciting time at the moment to buy a machine tool to invest because you've got that support so what is it that you're doing differently well as a German business fundamentally we've had no support from the UK government um, what I would say is UK government and the business bank should be commended for what they've done for manufacturing because without it I don't think the industry as a whole would be where it is today but right the way through, we've been able to support customers and continue to look forward with investment, with structures which allow them to earn money before they make their first instalment. That's critically important. Right, and um, you know, you've kind of touched on it before, but what is it that makes you different though, James? Because you are a major part yourself in every single deal that happens. So how are you helping the customer yourself? I think fundamentally, it's not about me. It's really about the, the time and the effort that all of the sales team here within DMG Mori have taken to understand finance. Finance for a long, long time was, it was an afterthought in the sales process. 
whereas all of the sales managers here have taken time to understand and to have empathy with customers, to, um, to really gain a grasp on why is a customer buying a machine? What are the challenges to the investment? And once we overcome those, then we can move forward together. Typical example, how, how the finance actually works. At what stage do you get involved, James? In the main, we are offering a financing proposal along with the very first quotation that goes out to a customer. So by the time the, the first quote goes out, the sales manager will have pretty much nailed down the application, the absolute correct spec for the customer with no nasty headaches which come in after a price has been quoted, no add-ons, they get a complete package. And alongside of that, we'll give an indication of the financing terms that are available. So I recently went out to a customer, um, I think I can name yeah, them, yeah. yes, um, Bedford C&C, Andy. Now, Andy's a small company and... Well, he's never had a new machine tool. Well, no, he's <laughs> not. And it was so good to see him and this wonderful machine sitting in his machine shop. And he literally is like me now. He couldn't stop smiling. But he said he's kind of got a good problem, right? Because he's now got this machine that does everything. It's getting, it's tearing through his work perfectly. And now we've got to then search for more work. So you've given him a good problem, but he never thought he could afford one of these machines and he can. So that has transformed his business, his life. So how did you do that? Um, whether it's a one man band or a, a, a SME or an OEM, we, we treat every single case the same way. And it's very much a case of understanding and appreciating that behind every machine tool investment, there's a financial decision. So we have to create that environment. So for Andy, we did that. And for all of our other customers, there, there is a financial challenge that we help them overcome. Now, speaking to Steve earlier on, it is that uh, the majority of the two days here is, is, is talking about UK manufacturing and holding stock. In other words, DMG Murray UK have uh, put a lot of money into over 40 machines that are coming here, James. So with that in mind, does, uh, the, the variety of the machines that are coming through, can you offer finance on all of them to new customers and existing customers? Yeah, absolutely, Mark. You know, we are, you know, we understand intrinsically what each of these machines do. We understand the benefits that a business will derive from them. And because of that, we're able to offer you know, market leading terms to help our customers invest with confidence. What would you say to someone, James, that thinks, I can't afford a DMG Mori? What, what, what would you, well, yeah, what would you say? Um, all that I would ever say is, give us the opportunity to sit, talk and understand the problem. Because quite often there's a perception, and perceptions are not wrong, but they can be broken down with the right argument and a full understanding. Because it reminds me of, of when I first came into the industry some nearly 30 years ago. I remember going to a subcontracting company and basically they were saying, I'm going to buy that machine when I get the contract. I mean, you could not do that now, could you, James? No, it's very much chicken and egg. And one of the benefits of our, you know, our, our top seller deals with the six months with zero payment and no deposit, what that allows a company to do is to put a machine on the floor, take a month or so to get used to it if it's the first of, of, of this type, and then really generate, have the ability to generate some income before full repayments commence. And quite often, showing a prospective customer that you've got the machine in situ, that you're geared up, ready for production, showing them capability, that can be the, the difference between winning a contract and not. Now you've got another example of a company, am I right there? prototyping and then you put them on an operating lease. This is another example that you've done. Yeah, we had a, a very good customer, uh, who, um, long-standing customer who, who came to me with a problem whereby they, they had a, a, a requirement to, to make some R&D parts mm. for a finite period of time and we estimated around two years. Um, so we put together a, a two-year operating lease, a rental effectively, right. on, a, on the big brother of the machine behind you and the good news was that the, the, the components have been so successful they've secured a long-term contract and will now buy the machine. 
We've got a few more minutes uh, before we end the show today, but uh, coming up tomorrow, we're going to be speaking to Steve Finn uh, again about day one uh, and some other aspects of DMG Moray UK. We're talking about milling, but we're going to be talking about the DMU 50, the DMU 75 uh, and the NMV behind me. Uh, also turning um, NLX 2500 and the CLX 450, talking about hybrid uh, additive manufacturing, net service messenger. And this guy is going to be back talking to us about the next generation, which is also automation. Yeah, and I personally, have, um, I, I learn a lot from you guys in terms of your finance. And I think personally, what I would say is, for anyone who um, thinks, okay, has that perception of maybe it's out of my reach, just speak to you, talk to you, because you really do see deals in a different way and you're tailoring deals. And the more I speak to you, the more examples. And you know, we're out on the road, we see case studies of businesses out there buying your machines and talking about how easy it was. So um, that's all I can say is it's, you know, case studies really is proof is in the pudding. Uh, and I, I think when it comes to, uh, you know, sending your questions in to Charlie Lucas, I mean, the amount of emails that have been coming through to Charlie today, uh, you know, the finance aspect, yeah. it can be a bit of a tricky subject, can't it? Uh, but you're there to lead customers through that, aren't you, James? Yeah, finance can be a tricky subject. Um, having been on the other side and, and, and tried to second guess what a bank or a finance company will or won't do, what, what I can say now with absolute certainty because of the framework that we have from my colleagues in Germany is that we know that a deal will fly, we know what we need to do to make it work, mm. so therefore we can talk to a customer with certainty, not with a finger in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one thing I picked up uh, in Fronten this time last year, that some of the Germans actually used a term called bundles. What, what does that actually mean? Well, um, I think a bundle as such is a, it's almost like with your Audi, you can have an Audi black or it's a certain package of machine and certain options come with it. So that's really the, 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 the fundamental of a bundle. You may have a machine with some automation, with some technology, and then alongside of that, we put together a monthly payment. So it's so very flexible to, to, to each client. Absolutely. Wh whether it's just one machine or, let's say, a bank of machines. That, Absolutely, yes. Say. I'm thinking, sorry, yeah. that ultimately the goal is, just adding to, of course, when we're talking about the insurance, is you're getting one set fee, you've got the insurance, you've got maintenance and everything, and that's going to be the goal, really. In, it would be utopia that every machine went out that was financed, of course, mm. that then there was a five or six year maintenance program with the machine, so the customer knew that, that he was going to guarantee his uptime, yeah. and in the event of a problem, the insurance takes care and his cash flow is undisturbed, absolutely. Peace of mind. It is, yeah. And do you think, um, you know, uh, looking at the sales that have been very, very good in, in January and also February, I understand, here at DMG Murray UK, uh, is the finance a big aspect of that still? The finance is coming more and more into play. So in the first two months of this year, we've increased considerably on the 43% from last year. Uh, undoubtedly, as we come out of the pandemic, there will be a lot of companies that have fought very, very hard to survive. Yes. They will have had to put debt onto their balance sheet to give them cash to work through this period. Um, and again, all I can say is we will look forward at what machines will do, not looking at impaired balance sheets. Yeah. And finally, James, um, with all your years of experience within this industry in the finance, for those engineers that may not know DMG Murray, what would you say to them in reference to buy a machine? What can you actually offer them? What, what, what is the main USP? I think ultimately what the finance has been able to do is it's been able to make technology excellence affordable. Mm. Well, go. Lindsay, um, nice. you've been here all day. Yep. I know you've only been on the sofa for, for a couple <laughs> of sessions, but is there anything been really sort of hit the spot for you? Yeah, just be open-minded. Speak, speak to you, you guys about the technology because exactly what you've just said, nice and short and sweet there, you can get hold of this technology, just pick up the phone. That's Paul's favourite machine, by the way. Oh, is it? <laughs> um, a big thank you from us all at DMG Moray UK. Um, please join us at, from 10.30 tomorrow on the MTD CNC 
LinkedIn, YouTube, and also Facebook channels. It's been a, a great time. Thank you very much for your time, James. Thank you, Lindsay. And we look forward to seeing you at 10.30 tomorrow.